The tonal system is based on seven perfect fifths. F, C, G, D, A, E, B. The first fifth F and the last fifth B are not a perfect fifth. That's how the system is closed. They're a diminished fifth or augmented fourth, as you like it. But they need to be dissolved openly or closed. Therefore, they also create a tritone between the two resolutions. So the system is locked after seven perfect fifths. And if you sing, no single human voice can sing that large range, then you have to compact it to a scale, which comes from the sixth, seven fifths. By jumping over one, and you get to have the step motion. And then you have parallel singing together, in perfect fifths, nor major nor minor, because of um, the fact that they don't either need to be resolved since they're not a diminished and augmented interval. So therefore we had this Gregorian chants, which were so important for the parallel fifths until they reached, inevitably, the leading tone, that B, that would create the tritone fifth, that is the diminished fifth, the tension. They even called it devil in music because of that tension release compared to the perfect fifths, which of course didn't need any. And um, worshipping uh, was natural with perfect fifths, but not with the diminished because then the resolution would bring you to either close or open in major or minor. So you introduce a tension release plus major minor options when the parallel perfect fifths and octaves because of the unison being the same. Avoid it. But so how do you avoid a fifth? on the leading tone, other than the tritone, it's adding, in this case, an F-sharp to make it perfect fifth. But you don't have an F-sharp in the circle of fifths of C major. You don't have. So if you want to uh, keep within the seven tones of C major, then when you reach the B, you don't move. So then you create the becoming of polyphony or contrapoint, voice against voice, note against note, and you organize them in melodic layers. Then when later you organize the music in vertical chords, which come in shelvings of thirds, which is the interval that allows to have for the root a fifth after the third, a seventh, a ninth, an eleventh, a thirteenth, well a fifteenth is already the, the same as the root, so up to thirteenth. And the most basic is the triad of three. And then you have minor because of the third. And of course the fifth remains perfect, therefore neutral. And when you want to organize the chords within the scale, you see that on the first degree, tonic, the name of the tonality, C major, subtonic, median for the third degree, so you have minor, minor chords, then on the fourth degree, you have the subdominant, and then on the fifth degree, the dominant. Major degree chords. 
then the sixth degree is minor and the seventh is the famous diminished, the triton, the devil in music, the tension release, the one that will be in four tones connected to the dominant fifth degree with a major triad as we saw, plus the extra third on top, which would be a seventh to the root. But we call it dominant seventh. It dominates the tonality. Tonality names the name of the key in which you are, but the dominant locks it in by this triad plus the extra third, which is then a seventh. And we call it, therefore, dominant seventh. And uh, from this uh, bass line of circle of fifth motion, dominant dropping to tonic, you have within the dominant chord the leading tone, the B, which goes to the tonic by semi-step. And the, the dominant seventh of the seventh drops to the third because that's its resolution, tension release. So in fact, the bass note is a motion of fifth, which comes from the perfect fifth motion. And then the uh, chordal resolution with the inversions, which we will see right away, allows you to melodize with top steps or semi-steps, uh, not big leaps, or common tones. In this case, G is the common tone between the tonic and the dominant. Therefore, the left hand of the bass line on the pianist's playing would be the circle of fifths. Tonic, preceded by dominant to the tonic. And not in root positions. Because then you don't have the so-called voice leading, which is so meaningful because it's so singing and it's also melodic. So you have the best of both worlds, the harmonic progression of the circle of fifths through a scale or row in fifths, and then the harmonization of the chords that come as shelvings by thirds with inversions which allow them then through the voice leading to have a melodic organization of the harmonic progression through the inversions. What are the inversions? Root, third, fifth. If you start on the third, then the fifth and the root. And then you have a sixth chord between the first note and the top. And then the fifth, root, and third. And then again the sixth between the root and the top, but of the fourth inside. So first inversion, sixth chord, second inversion, sixth fourth chord. Naturally, if you have a chord that has four sounds and no more a triad, for instance, a dominant seventh, then it's a minor seventh on a major triad. Inevitably, you'll have then three inversions since you have four tones, starting on the third, fifth, seventh root, dominant, or in this case, the fifth degree only, but it's not a dominant for the chord, is the root, because it's the fifth, then you have the seventh, the root, and the third, and then the seventh, the root, the third, and the fifth. So it's a reorganizing, reshuffling the order of the notes in order to obtain combined with the harmonic progression of a bass line that goes through the degrees. to be avoided in harmonic progressions compared to the Gregorians? Well, it's because we have added to each of the degrees of the scale a chord, and then they start moving around in a different way that corresponds to their tension release. If you're a dominant tonic, and then you have um, four tones, chords on each degree, on the second degree, which was the minor triad, 
with the four tones, it's a minor seventh. Then two, five, one, with a leading tone. Semi step from the tonic. Middle voice or alto. A, G, G, step motion. And the tenor, the third voice that is on the bass on top of. All this appears simple, but it's an um, important factor to take in account is that it all comes from the circle of fifths and becomes progressively more flexible and complex to a certain extent in order to organize the voice leading for the different degrees of the scale and to organize its uh, either singing, either a harmonic performance on an instrument or group of instruments. And um, this is the part where usually harmony or harmonic progressions corresponds to what we like to describe as a style because you can say, okay, I can do it in minor, in major, and then if I want to sound Baroque, um, I add ornaments. Not only, but mainly to give this colorization to the stylistic fact of the style. And then the same system works also with the styles that are very different. For instance, you can have uh, in Chopin like a prelude. And he's a romantic era composer. And then you have uh, uh, the tonal system that is a set of rules for the game that allows to adapt to the different styles through the centuries, at least between the 17th and the late 19th. And that doesn't mean that they all sound alike. That means they have the same set of rules that they obey to for the tension and release. Of course, you add different affects, which is the expression of delay for an emotion that is more intense or if you sing not always the syllables at the same time, or if you play instruments and you want to create a delay instead of directly, they have a suspension, or you attack directly that without preparation, and it's an appoggiatura, like the Italians call it, or we use the Italian way of calling it, leaning over the note. So these are the uh, basic facts that uh, people, the tonal system, which of course can be produced raw in rock or elaborate in voice-led um, um, harmonization uh, of um, a bass line, would it be for a basso continua, as we call it, for the Baroque music, uh, performance of the harmonic progressions on the bass line. Or a recitativo in arias. I want to tell you, I want to go home. Punctuated by a cadence, which we call the punctuation, like tonic, preceded by dominant. Or perhaps weaker, subdominant to tonic, because it's weaker without the leading tone. Since the leading tone creates the tension release. And when you organize the voices and you organize the chords and you organize the extra notes that you can add between the uh, seven notes of the fifths, which became the scale. You have tone, tones, and semitones in this case. Tone, tone, semitone. But between the two tones, you can add a semitone. That 
this in the Western tuning. <clears throat> and then you have the same between F and G, between G and A. So you people it with semitones. That's what the chromatic scale is from the Greek chroma for color. You colorize, you add more, um, in fact, tones to the tonality by dividing the spaces to the smallest in the tuning of Western style. But this scale is nor major nor minor compared to C major or C minor. is neutral since it's nor major nor minor but it's very often used as an extra uh, colorizing effect of you want this analogy uh, for the tonal system when you're in minor you already express sadness but if you add instead of the D a D flat what we call a Neapolitan six you make the minor even darker, so you can choose shades and different um, subtle levels of different um, expression that the minor can bring. As a matter of fact, the major is constructed in the scale by two tetrachords, as we saw from the circle of fifths. And the tetrachord in Greek means four, so it's four tones in step motion, ton ton semitone. And in major scales, they are constructed symmetrically, ton ton semitone. So the top one of C major can become the bottom of G major, etc. But in minor, the two tetrachords aren't symmetric. You have the minor third, which creates the sense of minor versus the major third. And then on the top, you have either the major tone ton semitone, either semitone, leading tone semitone, and in between a gap of an augmented second, the harmonic minor, or the bottom tetrachord remains minor, and the top major for the ascending minor, which is a modal version of the several uh, minor scales. And on the way down, often called natural, but in fact it is minor descending, minus the leading tone, since we don't have any more B natural going to C, the semi-stop that brings us to the tonic. And it's, you know, on the descent, you have tone, tone, semitone. So you have in the tonal system at least the usage of three minor scales, the harmonic and the melodic descending or rising or dropping, and descending, ascending, or a combination of thereof, and you can do, or, uh, and um, in major, you can't have any of these because all the tetrachords being exactly the same, therefore they can be um, reproduced only identical. And um, you have one single major and at least three minors. That is not something very obvious to hear when you listen to a piece, uh, because sometimes the composers combine the different minors, uh, compound them, and you have uh, Bach very often uses one type of minor and another type of minor in the same piece. Like in the second partita, he uses the, of course, uh, harmonic minor. Minor six, leading tone, without gap. And then,
there is a descending then the ascending and six with the harmonic. Now he descends with the ascending, then with the descending, and then harmonic, leading tone tonic, and descending minor melodic with a flat seven. Leading tone is sharp seven, minor descending is seven, flat. So he plays a lot with the different options of colorization for the melodic, harmonic, ascending or descending scales, which gives the minor mode um, for the scale such uh, incredible um, variety of um, subtle touches that expresses a sadness of mood that can be bittersweet or half happy or fully sad. Of course, these are very basic um, ways of describing it, but nevertheless, it is a way to um, be able, when you listen to um, Baroque, to Romantic, and to modern, early, uh, let's say, 20th century music, how the composers choose to play with these options they have on their palette of the tonal systems offering. And of course, some of the composers choose at different times of their time periods and therefore styles to alter some of these um, chordal progressions or model, and uh, they don't just take it as they receive it, sometimes they alter it. <clears throat> and um, it reaches the point where a composer like Mio uses bitonality, where one hand plays in one scale. Imagine Mozart's easy sonata in C major, where the accompaniment is also in C major, as the melody is. And the bitonality, like Mio does, would be. Of course, it creates a sense of um, uh, discontinuousness or non, non, not fitting, but that's the purpose of it. And then it destroys the whole idea of tension and release, and you have dissonances randomly. But this is what is interesting with the tonal system. I find very enriching is that different composers can alter it in order to create their own musical language where some of the, let's say, uh, effects that they want to reach are very becoming their own uh, personal touch to it. For instance, Debussy uses a full tone scale. No leading tone, no tension, no release, no triads. It's only augmented fifth chords, which cannot be resolved since they are not tension released. So they are just parallel chords. And he doesn't use it constantly. He alternates with a regular tonality. And then... But he introduces that. And um, the influence of Asian music uh, into the Western music was um, defined by the pentatonic. So if the seven tones of the circle of fifths become six for the, for the uh, step, whole step scale of Debussy, well, it's not his, but mostly introduced by him and then copied a lot since uh, by many who like that atmosphere that it creates. And then you have the pentatonic, which is by its word five and also melodic, you don't have chords, you have mostly melodic. Same with the whole tone scale. Whenever in tonality major, or minor, So 
Now, some composers like Beethoven started um, early in the 19th century using a combination of major third with a minor sixth, which creates a sense of bittersweet emotion um, when you have a major chord with a third, but then the top part is minor. Sort of semi-minor or uh, smile with a tear.